Yeah, 11 in a row on the road, 11 and 0 away from Staples Center. Their only loss coming on opening night. That was at Staples Center. They were the road team to the Clippers. I want to talk about AD first in his dominant performance through three quarters, guys. He had 39 points. That's where he finished. But he also had nine boards. He had three blocks. He had two steals and fish uh, doing it on both ends of the floor. You're talking about Rudy Gobert, Jokic, Whiteside getting switched out onto guards. McCollum, Murray throughout this road trip showing that he is 100% right now the best defensive player in the league, but offensively he's unstoppable and he's feeling it from all over the floor. Yeah, I mean, he just looks really comfortable and as great as he is, it, it's still, you know, this is a transition. You know, new team, new teammates, you know, playing in a, in a big market, uh, a lot more, you know, kind of scrutiny day to day. And it, it all feels really easy and fluid uh, for AD. I think what James mentioned earlier about the time spent in the offseason, you know, where they really were able to have some conversations and start to build some chemistry and camaraderie before the season started. Uh, I, I do believe that's playing, uh, you know, a factor, but the one thing that just keeps coming to mind for me is these guys seem to just have a common shared vision of, of what kind of team they want to be. And everybody is holding themselves to that standard, and that's what's allowing them even early in this season to really play at a high level. Yeah, it's a great point, Fish. And we talked a lot about the defense in these first two games on this trip. When you hold Denver to 96 in Denver, yeah. you hold Utah to 96 in Utah, those are special things this team is doing. Tonight was all about the offense. And by the way, on this three-game trip, the Lakers averaged 121 points. So, that, you know, this is scary for the rest of the NBA. When you have a team that can do these things defensively and then crank it up on the offensive end. And by the way, this 11-game road streak, longest for the Lakers since 1971-72. Mm. So pretty impressive stuff right now. Yeah, really amazing. Yeah. And when you think about LeBron and AD, and, you know, when you're out on the road and you're playing a really good team, and we talked about at halftime, <laughs> they're playing these incredible first halves. Okay, you know Port Portland's going to come out throwing haymakers in that third quarter. Well, LeBron and AD, they end that. LeBron goes for what? 12, 14 in the first five and a half minutes of that quarter. They combine for 27 of the 33, and that's ball game fish. Yeah, no, they, it, <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day, how yeah. we had become accustomed to be, the belief that you need three, four mm -hmm. all-stars, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, all-NBA guys just to have a chance to win a championship in this new modern NBA. Uh, and I think that LeBron and AD are, are proving again that it's not how many of all NBA guys you have. It's the right ones. Mm -hmm. And these two guys are really committed to playing basketball the right way. And, and when your best players are willing passers, committed on the defensive end, sharing the spotlight, speaking highly of their teammates, playing hard on defense, the positive energy you see seeing from the top of the roster to the bottom of the roster, it, everybody's together. And, and the coaching staff deserves a lot of credit as well. It's a, it's a good virus to have. That's the kind of virus you want to have when you have your two leaders. And obviously, it's contagious because you took a young player like Kuzma who's starting to understand by witnessing what he's seeing on a daily basis with these veteran players. Not only LeBron and Davis, but, you know, guys like Green and Dudley who've been there. So it's contagious. And, you know, it's almost like, you know, you're getting picked on outside and you're like, wait a minute, I'm going to get my big brother. And you go get LeBron and AD, yeah. you come back and you clean all that up. So it's, it's a good backup to have, and you can see that the rest of the team are totally enrolled into what's going on in, with yeah. this team. All right, LeBron, I want to get to the... Well, shout out to Cruz there. I want to get to the dominant uh, road trip in a second, but first, wasn't guaranteed you were going to see Melo again on the court. I know it's all about brotherhood and off the court, but just what was it like having uh, that moment with him tonight? Uh, I mean, we got so much history. I mean, it's been my brother for a long time, since like 2001, and uh, just to see uh, you know him get another opportunity at what he loves to do. Much respect to the Portland Trailblazers, and uh, you know that most respect to him by just staying ready and staying professional, and he's, he's just making the most of his opportunity. All right, now at Denver, at Utah, at Portland, that's three of the tougher buildings to play in on one trip. Uh, LeBron, uh, what does that just give you guys moving forward to build on the momentum you started the season with? I mean, we don't know what it gives us moving forward, but we know what it gives us right now. And uh, it's great to uh, lock in on a trip and be able to take care of business. 
uh, win, lose, or draw, we wanted to play Laker basketball on this road trip, and we was able to exceed that. Um, you know, and play well in, in three of the, uh, like you said, tougher uh, buildings in this league. So uh, it's a good road trip for us. What's been the key to the cohesion that seems to have come so fast with UNAD and then just spreading out to the team at large? Uh, it's just the respect and understanding between the two of us. And we hold each other, um, you know, accountable every game. And, you know, when it starts with us, it trickles down to everybody else on the team. So we all buy in. You know, once our teammates see, you know, how we sacrifice for the team, how much we buy into what Coach Vogel and the coaching staff want to do, and how much we hold each other accountable, you know, everything else trickles down to the rest of the guys. Thanks, LeBron. I appreciate it. All right, guys, LeBron James after yet another dominant win for the Lakers, 11 in a row on the road. Uh, AD, LeBron was joking that, you know, one of the keys to your was just having more guys that are sick around you uh, to, to make you sick, to, to kind of get you that next level on this trip. Have you have you felt anything on this trip as, you, as you've just, you know, had a, a greater impact even than earlier in the season? Me mean, being sick? Well, not being sick, but just what 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 was it, if, if anything, as you've, these last couple of games, LeBron was just saying you've taken your game up a little bit. Um, just gotten to a rhythm. Just getting to a rhythm. Um... Figuring out where, you know, I'm going to get most of my shots from. You know, what sets I'm going to get most of my shots from. And it's just, you know, about energy, playing hard. Um, that's really it, just taking my time, having got confidence in, in my game. Um, you know, but it's really just a rhythm. You know, I was out of the rhythm. Which I, I won't say out of rhythm, I was trying to find the rhythm early in the season. Um, and I had some good games, but um, I wasn't shooting too well from the floor. Um, and then ever since that, the day with me and Rondo um, played one on one in the facility, um, I kind of yeah. found the rhythm there and was able to carry that throughout um, the rest of the season so far. So, you know, for me, just trying to stay in the rhythm. With that coming and just seeing how you guys performed in three of the tougher places to win uh, in the Western Conference, uh, does, has that told you anything additionally about the team, even if that was clear when you guys were winning most every game in November? Uh, we feel like we can win anywhere. Um, you know, we feel like we're a good road team. Uh, obviously, on the road, when you have to come together even more, um, three tough environments to win in, and we're able to come in and, and take all three. But you know, we have our minds set on, you know, on something special, and we know in order to, you know, reach that goal, um, we have to stay in the moment and get, go game by game. And um, you know, we we take every game personal. You know, we want to go out there and. Um, Know, be the best team. You know, we want to be out there uh, winning each quarter. We want to be out there diving on the floor. We want to win in hustle points. You know, we want to win in rebounding. All the little things, and um, if we continue to do that, then we'll be fine. You know, we've you know given ourselves a challenge of we call it the Avery Challenge. You know, and ever since Avery been out, our defense has, uh, took a hit a little bit in the last three games. I'm not sure what it was tonight, but. Um, the last three games, we've been able to be the number one team in the defensive rating, um, and we want to get that every time, you know. So, you know, we we lay our hats on defense, um, knowing that it's going to fuel our offense. You've never really been on a team, uh, I mean, since Kentucky anyway, that's been this much of a front runner uh, in the league. What are you learning about yourself as a guy who needs to find ways to grow and you know, challenge yourself when your team is ahead, when everyone's gunning for you? I mean, um, let's say just stay in the moment. I mean, we have a great team. We know that, you know, we're going to get everybody, everyone's best shot, you know, when we step on, on the floor, no matter who we're playing against. But, um, you know, it's fun. We got to embrace it. You know, it's fun. You know, I just remember in Kentucky, anytime we stepped on the floor, no matter who it was, you know, we're going to get their best shot. You know, they made a commercial out of our, one of the game winners in Kentucky. So, I mean, same same thing here. You know, when you're the number one team in the league, people are going to find a way um, to come out and, and shoot a higher field goal percentage, you know, than what they normally shoot, find ways to make shots, to get stops, um, play harder. Um, and, you know, we got to embrace that. It got to be fun for us. Um, coming in, having a challenge every single night. So um, it's fun for us. And, you know, it's our job to lock in every night and make sure that we come out with a win. Hey, Frank, so this, these three wins have come by 50 plus points in what was thought to be one of the tougher road trips of the season. Uh, what I know you're more of a game to game coach, but uh, what do you feel about the trip and the position that puts you in? Uh, I'm just impressed with our guys' uh, level of energy and focus, and uh, you know, to play on the road the way we played has been just impressive to me. 
Um, the guys are locked in. You know, we didn't have shoot around where, you know, the, the, the rest preparation or work balance is always a tricky one. And um, you know, with three games and four nights, we didn't have a shoot around and asked, asked our guys to uh, really lock in on a film session. Um, you know, to have the game plan in place uh, just mentally off of film. And you know, the Denver game, we did that. This game, we did that. And the guys performed at a high level. So, uh, you know, I couldn't be, couldn't be more happy with, uh, with what we're doing on the road. Now LeBron and AD have to, seem to have such a strong connection. Do you think that filters down uh, to, the, to the rest of the team and the whole, helps the whole team cohesion? Absolutely. You know, those guys set the tone in a lot of ways, but uh, their cohesiveness to, you know, together, in, you know, with the, with the two of them um, is a big part of the team's, oh, the overall team's chemistry, right, and the, uh, the positive energy and the togetherness we're trying to build. Again, we have a new group, you know, we're still trying to learn each other, um, you know, far from a finished product, but uh, definitely off to a good start. Just anything on Rondo? I know at halftime you said it had some hamstring tightness. Yeah, he had a left uh, left hamstring strain and uh, will be reevaluated tomorrow, considered day, day to day. What have you made of his play the last couple of weeks? He's been exceptional. You know, he, he's, he's, I don't know, just given us a, a great boost. The reason I think that we went from playing a lot of close games to, you know, really separating ourselves in a lot of these games uh, is, is because of his play off the bench. And, um, you know, just him and LeBron uh, playing together this year uh, far better than they did last year, um, you know, is a really positive sign for our, for our team. You mentioned the energy. Um, what did Anthony Davis's energy do for you tonight? 15 points in the first quarter to allow you guys to kind of get a momentum going? Uh, he's just a beast. You know, um, it's not just his energy, it's his production. You know, I mean, just getting, getting it done on both ends of the floor. Uh, dominating defensively with strips and blocks and containment and defensive rebounding and rim protection and all those things and then um, being able to play through the post shooting threes rolling to the basket uh, handling in, uh, you know on the break um, he's really doing it do, doing it all and um, obviously a big part of our win. Hey, Rajan, Frank said that you just felt some tightness in the hamstring at halftime. Could you just uh, ex ex explain what you thought and what you felt? Just tightness. Um, I've been feeling it for a couple weeks now, but just tonight I just told him uh, I'll just probably call it a night after halftime. Oh, Rajan, there was another game where I think you only played in the first half. Was this a similar thing or what was going on? Um, no, I think that was more um, just caution for my Achilles. Like I said, we had a, a decent amount of lead. and. Like I said, I trust my teammates to finish the game. Is it a compensation thing for the Achilles? Uh, I don't think so. The doctors haven't told me that. Um, it's going to matter continue to build my strength and go from there. Do you have a feeling about Sunday? No, I'm just enjoying this win tonight. Um, when, when, when Rodney goes down, the injury we later learned was an Achilles injury. Does that make you feel a little more cautious about stuff you're feeling sort of in that back leg chain you got there? No. Um, I'm just glad I took my time earlier when I did feel my Achilles and calf um, issues. Cause the first one to you know, say something to me about it. He kind of he said he knew right away when it happened. Um, but uh, like I said, just looking back when, when I did have Achilles problems, I'm just glad I waited a couple extra days. Roger, uh, Frank was talking over the summer that he said he, he thought your three-point shooting was had been good the previous years and encouraged you to keep going. You're I think 52% on the year now. Um, uh, how was that? How have you evolved to that nature where the threes are being that confident? Um, just taking them and making them, I guess. You know, it's uh, it's kind of have an even kill mentality. You know, never too high, never too low. And like I said, I've been getting a shot and feeling comfortable, putting the work in and just shooting it. Right, before you before you went out with the hamstring, what was what did you feel like was clicking with the offense? The numbers were were pretty outrageous. Was it as good as the numbers made it look? Um, I think you know, it starts with defense. You know, we were able to get stops and get out in transition. We got a lot of wide open looks. Um, I think the starter started off with, I think, eight out of ten points in the paint. So it was just coming in with a massive off the bench that uh, if we get stops, continue to get stops, we can push the pace and uh, get open shots and he looks we want. Frank, if we could start with a health update. How, how was the cold? Has that moved through the team yet? Uh... I've not got any update on it. I believe everybody's passed it. It's not not on any. And it's not a it's not a concern about anybody uh, missing any time or needing to watch anyone. It, what if you could almost isolate one thing? Uh, what about this team has allowed you to have all the success on the road with the ten straight wins in different environments? Well, I just think we're a good team. You know, when we commit to trust in the pass offensively, to run in the floor, to uh, to defend in at a high level, 
Um, you know, we have talent around, uh, you know, in, in regard with, to our superstars, um, but we have ro role players that are starring in their roles. And, um, you know, I don't know if that's why we're winning on the road. It's just why we're winning, you know, and um, we've got a confident group. They're very motivated to do something special this year. And um, you know, we're off to a good start, but that's all it is right now is a good start. Hey, what have you noticed from Portland the last week or two as they've been playing better basketball, at least from appearances? Well, what I, the first thing I noticed is, you know, they, they, they have a couple bad losses, but their schedule their schedule's been brutal. You know, they've, they've got 13 losses, and I think 10 of them are against teams with winning records. Um, you know, they had a lot of turnover with their roster around, around their two main guys. And, uh, you know, when you have that, and you get hit with a hard early schedule. You, you could see, like, I can see why they struggle a little bit early. But um, teams like that that have great continuity, a great uh, a system, a great coaching staff, um, you know, they're going to find some some footing and uh, and get rolling at some point. Uh, and I and I do think the addition of of Carmelo has sort of uh, changed their energy a little bit. Uh, he's come in and played really really well for them and given them a big boost. Right, you've been in the league for a while and you see <coughs> stars come and go, uh, and maybe. Don't realize you know, how unique of a situation this is. That we're still talking about LeBron James versus Carmelo Anthony in 2019. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, that that matchup that's still going? I think it's great. You know, the two of them are friends, and um, I got to coach both of them in the All Star game in 2014, I think it was. Uh, and um, you know, it's it's always good to see guys that you know that are uh, have, have such decorated careers that came into the league together. Um, you know that are that have become friends. You know, have an opportunity to compete uh, for a game that matters, and um, you know, it should be a fun environment. Greg, when coming into this road trip, did you look at it as a? What, what kind of test did you look at the road, at the road trip as a in whole as a whole as? Well, I didn't really look at this trip per se as much as I did just the month of, of December. Um, you know, the month of December was just filled with road games against teams with winning records. You know, or teams that were playoff teams last year. And this team was in the conference finals last year. And, um, you know, it seems like we're facing that every night. Uh, you know, so it's just a, a little bit of a, a litmus, lit, 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 litmus test about, um, you know, where we are as a team. We know we had success against teams with, with lesser records, and, you know, we're off to a good start against uh, some of the better teams as well. You talked about the Blazers and their roster turnover. You dealt with that yourself, obviously. Can you detail the challenges that come with getting a team on the same page early with so many new faces? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, rhythm and timing, it, you know, it takes time. You know, guys got to learn each other. They got to learn what the new coach is asking of them. You know, the new coach has to has to learn the player's strengths and weaknesses and how the, how the parts fit together. And, um, you know, it is just, just something that takes time. You know, you play against certain teams. We played Denver the other night. Uh, they had their whole starting starting five back, most of their bench back, coaching staff back, system back, and um, you know you know you have to play against uh, their cohesiveness uh, with the continuity bump that they get, and um, you know it's a big challenge. That's uh, something that that, that Portland, uh, the Trailblazers, have gone through a little bit early, but um, you know I believe they're going to, you know they've already started to to right the ship a little bit, and again you know, when the season's over, I think they'll be one of the top teams in the West. All right, guys, we got, we got to talk defense first. I mean, there's no other way to do it. Back-to-back -back games on the road in elevation. The Lakers allowed 96 points each night, one night in Denver, one night in Utah. What are you seeing right now, Robert Ory? You know, I'm seeing a team that's committed to playing defense, um, from blocking shots to getting in the lane. I know we're going to talk about the, uh, the shot blocking ability that they have, but if you really look, they're playing the passing lanes mm -hmm. very good. They're getting their hands on, on the ball. They're getting steals. They're getting deflections. And that's one of the things that people never talk about. And A.C. Fresh is one of the best guys at doing that. Rondo gets involved with cross. We all know LeBron, but, you know, I'm going to leave this shot blocking to you, James. No, I, I agree with you, Rob. I mean, they had, you know, 12 block shots, you know, last night. And, and you could tell when Utah was 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 – driving into the lane. They had shots, but they weren't quite sure if the shot blocker was there. I thought that was just an amazing uh, stat. 13 steals. Mm -hmm. Rob talked about that. That means that the hands were busy, deflections. We, they don't have a stat for that, but there was a lot of deflections. So the mindset of this team coming in after playing in Denver, a tough team, a good defensive team, going into another 
high altitude situation in Utah, another good defensive team. It was an impressive start, 21 points in the second quarter, only 21 points in the fourth quarter. The defense held up and won the game for them. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Anthony Davis, he had the IV uh, the first night uh, in Denver, came back strong the very next night. He's outplayed Rudy Gobert twice now. I mean, is there any doubt that he is the front runner for the Defensive Player of the Year award? He is no doubt. Uh, he's number one. I think the Greek Freak is number two. But the way he is playing, he's moving his feet on the perimeter. You can see the other night in Denver, he had to guard Murray. He was moving his feet. And against Utah, he went to contest the shot. And then he hustled back in to block it from behind. And it's little things like that that show you that you are putting the effort and the energy into playing defense. Because there's a lot of guys that do the fake defense. They stay in front. The next thing you know, the guy drives to the hole and lands up. Oh, I played good defense. No, you didn't. AD is committed to it. He's following through it. He's a heat seeking missile when it comes to playing defense. There's no question. I've never seen a big that size with that much length that could move laterally. He can switch out on anybody. He can switch out on a guard because he knows how to use his size and he doesn't over defend. He just kind of lets you do your thing and he tracks you. It's like Rob said, he tracks you like a GPS and he's he's a master at blocking shot. He's the reason why the Lakers are doing as well as they are. All right, we got to have a little fun right now. Robert Orr, you made 795 threes in your career. <laughs> Dwight Howard, has made seven, <laughs> including the one from the uh, from the corner uh, last night. He a enjoyed threes, it. Huh? He, you know, he was excited. The bench was excited. What, what do you think about Dwight, his play, and, and hitting a three? Man, his energy and his effort and his love for the game. I think he lost the love in the past three to four years, but he's regained it. And once you get that love back, you get the energy back. And the bench is behind him. The coaches are behind him. When you know you got that love from your brotherhood, it gives you a lot of He's blocking shots. He's rebounding. And he had the shot from the corner. He looked a little hesitant. He gave a little jab to get the guy off him. And he shot the shot like he knew what he was doing. I've seen him after the game at home. He'll come back out after the game and take a lot of shots here he in Q. And that lets you know he's putting in the time. He's putting in the effort to make shots. But, you know, hopefully that seven can go to 700 like I have. James, you made 117 <laughs> in your career. So you can, you can weigh in a little bit on this. I made that too. many? Yeah. I looked it up. Congrats. I, was, I thought I was in single digits. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we don't want to see him taking that shot, you know, it's, it's, you know, but, you know, if the, if the shot clock is running down and, you know, he feels comfortable, you know, hey, take one, you know, one every fly. 20 games. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. All right. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it went in Rome, right? I mean, why not? Lakers are uh, going good. Uh, it would be fun to say, all right, road trip's over. Lakers can come home and have some fun. Still got to play in Portland. For decades now, it's been a tough place for the Lakers to play, even on the Shaq and Kobe teams. Let me rephrase that, the Shaq and Kobe and Ori teams. They had uh, trouble playing up there. What is it about that place? Even though Portland, kind of off to a slow start, you don't want to uh, underestimate the Trailblazers at all. You never know what you're going to get out of that team because they can come with the energy, then sometimes they cannot come with the energy. So it's just going to be a very difficult game to play because most of the guys on the team are Nike guys, so they head to the Nike <laughs> store. James, they got Carmelo Anthony, too. He's yeah, kind of done Carmelo, a little renaissance. You know, and from what I understand, he's he's adapting pretty well yeah. to the team. And uh, it's always been a tough play place to play, even back in the 80s. It puts you to sleep. The sun is never out. <laughs> so it's dark all the time. It's raining all the time. <laughs> and it's cold. Like and it's just, these a, days. it's just a <laughs> tough place to play. You can't you can't get your, your spirits up there. It's just it's depressing. It, you know, it's never any sun. And and they've always had really good teams. So it, mm -hmm. that makes it makes it yeah, tough. That's an issue too.